Two weeks ago, I ranted about the upcoming UN Climate Summit in Paris. Today, I want to talk about the landmark decision that the US Food and Drug Administration made. They decided it was OK for Canadian company Aqua Bounty to unite the genes of a Chinook salmon and an ocean pout to create this. That's right. For the first time in history, genetically modified salmon is going to be available at a supermarket near you. So let me get this straight. We're genetically engineering an animal that doesn't currently exist for our own benefit? What could possibly go wrong? Well, according to Canadian company Aquabounty, absolutely nothing. The fish pose no threat because they have the same nutritional value as wild and farm salmon. They won't even need to be labeled, so you won't know what you're picking up. Now, is this safe? According to the company, they're only going to be grown in two places, Fortune Bay PEI and the mountains of Panama. Both these hatcheries are lined with precautions to keep the salmon enclosed and to keep them from escaping. Furthermore, the company has actually gone through a process to make all the fish female that are being bred and also all the fish sterile. So from that aspect, on the surface, it seems okay. Now the premise is simple. What they did was simply take the genes from a Chinook salmon, which is the largest salmon. They took genes from the ocean pout, which is an eel-like fish, a bottom dweller that grows near the bottom of the ocean in freezing cold temperatures. And that's going to allow the salmon to not just grow in spring and summer like they naturally do, but also to grow throughout the fall and winter. This means that they'll be reaching full maturity by in one and a half years, as opposed to the normal lifespan of three years. Now, what if the fish do somehow escape? Now, that's very unlikely given the precautions. But what environmental activists have harped on, in fact, is that the sterilization process of these fish is not 100%. That means that up to 5% of these fish that are kept in hatcheries, should they escape, would actually be able to breed successfully. This means they would be able to outcompete their mates, their wild and farmed salmon, for food, thus disrupting the food chain, leading to a whole host of consequences. Now, I think the bigger question is not just specifically uh, about the salmon, but where is this going to lead? For that, let's take a look at Aqua Bounty and their history. They've actually been trying to get this measure passed for the last 20 years. The company is on the, on the verge of filing bankruptcies, plunging millions and millions of dollars into this experiment. Now, as a company uh, that's invested so much over so much time, they're definitely going to want a return on their investment. Now, how are they going to get that return? Well, in the last few years, aquaculture has actually seen a huge growth in the United States and worldwide. Aquaculture is now outgrowing, outpacing beef production in the United States. It's growing by 9% since 2012, whereas beef production is only growing about 2 to 3% since 2012. So the global demand is there. And a lot of people, well, a lot of environmental groups are saying that the danger here is not just these two isolated tanks, but what happens after this r r rule is passed, Aqua Bounty is going to be selling genetically modified eggs to Aqua farmers. They're going to be selling them to them around the world, throughout North America, throughout South America. And these Aqua farmers aren't going to be taking the same precautions as the hatcheries in PEI and Panama. That means it's a lot more likely these fish can actually escape. And what about this decision made by the FDA? Uh, it passed with not a lot of knowledge and the reason we came to even know about Aqua Bounty in the first place is because of the intense scrutiny they received from the public. That forced Aqua Bounty to actually allow the FDA to release some of their information about their company and what they do. This means that in future cases, should this go through, that companies that want to genetically modify animals for sale will not have to disclose any information. So that is the dangerous question. Now, the e sorry, eco-justice lawyers are actually challenging this ruling and fighting it in court. It is not currently legal in Canada, but the FDA has approved it, though they're under intense pressure to relook at it. I guess the big question is, where does this end? If there's already talk about genetically modifying pigs so they have extra thick backsides for more bacon, there's talk of genetically modifying cattle so that they don't have horns, which makes it easier for them to breed. So where do we draw the line in terms of genetically modified foods? Now, proponents of this will say that in, a, in the world we live in with the population growing, the pressure is on 
Atlantic salmon as an endangered species, here we are providing more food and a sustainable planet. The dangers, however, of upsetting an ecosystem could be monumental and could actually do more harm than good. A lot is at stake with this decision. The FDA has decided it's okay to sell you genetically modified food. How far this goes will remain up to you. Until next time, thank you.